You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Today on the Katrina Merriweather Show, we'll take a look at what the Tigers did in early conference play and see what Coach had to say when she rubbed shoulders with NBA greats. We'll also take a look at what's ahead. This is the Katrina Merriweather Show. I learned very quickly what it means to be a is on. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And by Simmons Bank, the official sponsor of women's athletics. Believe it or not, we are halfway through the women's conference season. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Woloshin. And I'm Tyler Springs. Let's take a look at some of the Tigers' recent highlights. Memphis on the road at Cincinnati. Destiny Thomas gets involved in the post early. The freshman made all four of her shots in a nine-point effort. Madison Griggs, a known outside threat, goes glass here. Memphis was up two at the break, but the Tigers put their foot down in the second half. Hannah Riddick cleaned up with a double-double, 10 points, 10 boards. Griggs would score 13 of her 19 points after the break, making the most of her only steal of the game. And a running mate, Jamira shoots. She gave Cincinnati the Blues, scoring 15 points in the second half, part of a 22-point night that led all Tigers in a 20-point victory on the road over the Bearcats. Back at home, Memphis got a rematch with Temple after losing in Philadelphia in December, and they made it count. Riddick posted another double-double, a career-high 12 points and 11 rebounds. Lynetta Williams got her hooks into the Owls, collecting nine first-half points. And the Tiger defense has been superb the last few weeks. Look at Imani Jefferson here. She makes the block, gets the outlet mall pass, and she's going shopping for a bucket. She treats her teammates too, handing out a career-high seven assists, including this one to Williams, who pulls the string at the buzzer. Memphis goes on to win by 11, blocking out all memories of the earlier loss to Temple. Next stop, East Carolina. Jamira shoots at a career-high 32 at Minji's Coliseum three years ago, and she was the unquestioned outstanding performer there this week. Shoots out dueled Pirates guard Danae McNeil with a game-high 24 points. The rip, the run out, and the incoming rack finish from the fifth-year senior. Memphis breaks the game open with a 12-1 run in the final six minutes, and they win it by eight. It's the Tigers' first win at East Carolina since 2016, collecting their third straight win to move to 4-3 and three in conference play. Here we are, Coach, about halfway through this year. Let's talk a little bit about the chemistry. You brought several newcomers in to a bunch of folks that were here. You've had the maturation of players like Hannah Riddick. What has this been like for you? Uh, it has been, um, for lack of a better term, surprise pie. You know, I, I think that we, um, we had this idea going in, especially with the opportunity to go to Greece and really feeling like we would get ahead. Um, but then we had some changes. I think you mentioned Hannah Riddick and she undeniably, her effort and the energy that she brings to the team um, as a sophomore and someone who plays sparingly as a freshman um, was undeniable. You know, so she ends up in the lineup and, and has become a really important part of what we're doing. And I always like to credit the older players when they have someone younger come in and their ability to embrace them and support them and for it not to be an issue chemistry wise. You had an early conference season loss against Temple and followed that with one against East Carolina. And after that, you guys had a little bit of a come together meeting where I think you hashed some things out and you started down a different path. That was clear against SMU where you guys blew them out. One of the things that contributed to that was Destiny Thomas getting the start in the post. And again, that's young players improving and gripping a role. What other things did you do that made the team change the way they were playing? I think getting Jamira and Maddie to relax a little bit. You know, they come back and Jamira obviously comes back as a fifth year wanting to compete for a championship. You know, it got a little bit of a taste of having a, a winning record and now she's like, what's next? Uh, sometimes I don't know that people realize how long of a journey that can be and it doesn't necessarily turn around in a year or two. If that was the case, then every first, second or third year coach would, would be in the top three. And so I think their expectations were really, really high and that put some unnecessary pressure on them and to get some things done. And so when you heard me harping on moving the ball, trusting your teammates, it wasn't ill intended. It was, I got to do it. Like I'm a fifth year and I came back and I got to make this happen. Maddie, I got to make threes, got to make threes. And and as you saw, like in our game against Cincinnati, Maddie becomes a scorer and, and not just a shooter. And all of a sudden our second half looks a lot different. Destiny Thomas was brought up 
How about her emergence? Is that a surprise? Not really. Uh, Destiny's really talented, and you can tell she's just really quiet. And so it's um, what we always call like a silent, silent assassin. And um, she just rebounds and she seals people off and she takes up space in there. And you may or may not hear her voice the entire time that she plays, but she is out there calling screens for her teammates, very mature. Um, and so I, I don't think it's a surprise to any of us. I can imagine how it is for, for people watching. Um, and what was really big for us in that Temple game was we didn't have Jada Wright. You know, so you start having conversations about this is why you play, this is why you prepare, and now it's your turn. And kudos to her for being able to step up in those moments. Away from basketball, I want to talk to you about what I think is a tremendous honor. You got to be a part of the Martin Luther King Day Symposium at the World Class Civil Rights Museum downtown. You spoke with illustrious people. Mark Spears was the uh, guy that was the moderator. Grant Hill was there. Uh, Danny Green, who's very articulate, was on there. What was that like for you? Did you learn stuff? Uh, absolutely. And Cornell Watson, who was the creator of the exhibit, had taken some amazing pictures uh, that just depicted history. And I think what it did for us, although it, it was focused on North Carolina, uh, was made us all realize that as young people, we walk through campuses and we really don't have any idea what those statues are, who the buildings are really made or named after. And I think it just was um, a big eye-opening experience for all of us. And what we really walked away with was the social responsibility that we have, you know, to, to continue to talk about things that may make people uncomfortable, but at the same time, look at all the progress that we have made and where we've come from. Uh, so I keep trying to find a better word, but powerful is the only thing I can come up with on the stage with those folks and the amount of talent and just investment that they make. And for it to have an athletic turn, I thought that that was pretty cool too. It was eye-opening and, and again, a, a very valuable experience. I was honored to be a part of it. Have you gotten to imbue some of that wisdom on your kids? Yeah, I think so. You know, we always try to reflect on that when we get them back together and say, hey, what did you think? What are the things that you took away? Yesterday we had conversations where they brought in their favorite uh, quote from Martin Luther King. And so we had some people read off a quote. They talked about it, what it meant to them, how it was important to them. Uh, so we just try to incorporate all the things and not just let it be an activity, but really do some reflecting so that we can get to, to peel back some layers about how everyone's affected by different things. And you've got your 901 Women's Celebration game coming up. So there are a lot of mature topics flying around this building right now. And I think it's really important for those things that happen around these athletes at this age. But for you, why do you think it's so important to mark 50 years of Title IX and do it especially for a women's basketball program on a big weekend like this? Well, I think that it just pays tribute to so many people that came before us that allow us to do what we're doing today and to teach young people to respect history. And we even came at it from an angle of, we're making history right now. And in 10, 20, 30 years, you're gonna want people to respect and appreciate all the hard work and dedication that you put into this program. And as you become a professional, you're gonna want that same respect. And, and sometimes you look at their faces and they're like, man, I never thought about it like that. But it's true, you know, we, we are all making history every day. And, and for me, it's just a matter of, making sure that they all know where the roots of our game came from, you know, and it's why all the alumni are always welcome, all the former coaches are always welcome. We make such a big deal about bringing them in because we don't have a job today if there weren't people who sustained all the struggles before to make it as easy as it is for us now. Coming up next on the Katrina Merriweather Show, we'll introduce you to a pair of sisters with a special bond. It's Lenise and Lynetta Williams. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Lynetta and Lanise Williams have played basketball together since they were eight years old. That dynamic has changed this year, but it's for the better. Do you remember at what age you started playing basketball together on a team or even in the back driveway? Uh, I think we started playing basketball together when we was around eight, when we were overseas. We had like little drills and stuff. We used to play on the same teams together, so yeah. It wasn't like an official team, but it was like, kind of like training. Yeah. Yeah. Lynetta and Lanise decided to become Tigers together, and they were teammates for three seasons. 
Throughout her career, Lanise struggled with injuries, and eventually she was diagnosed with a heart condition. But as Lanise fought to return to the court, Coach Merriweather's thoughts turned in a different direction. One time in the summer, Trina had just called me and was like, hey, let's, let's have a meeting. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like, I'm like stressing. I'm like, what is gonna happen? And I go to the meeting and then Trina just like lays it on me. She's like, look, I, I see you working. I know you're working. And, but I also know that like your dream of coaching. So what do you think about, you know, coaching? And I'm like, like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean by coaching? And so she kind of laid it out to me, like, you know, you would be a, you would still be technically a part of the team, but as a coach now, rather than as a player. And it was like, it was like a dream come true. Like all the stress just literally just let go. And it was just, from then on, I was just excited. So at some point you'd mentioned to her that you were interested in coaching. Yeah, it was like when we had first met, like having like one-on-one -on -one meetings and just, you know, getting to know each other. I had mentioned to her about like, just my whole basketball experience and how me going through the experiences that I went through, it opened my eyes and my love for coaching. Like I've always enjoyed just helping people and, you know, like guiding people. But when I was injured and seeing how I can be still so impactful on the sideline and seeing how impactful coaches are. I was like, I have to be that. Like, there is no question about it. Now I know my destiny is to do what they are doing. So yeah. What did you think when she came home and she called you and she said, hey, how about this? I know how much she loves coaching and I know how much she just helps me. And I know like anybody else that gets the opportunity to get helped by her, I think that's just the best thing ever. And um, she was happy. So if she's happy, I'm, I'm great, I'm fine. So, and I know she went through a lot and I was just really happy that Trina was able to find something to make her happy. What did you see in her that now your teammates are seeing? Oh, uh, my sister is uh, very vocal. That's one of the <laughs> things, she's very vocal. And with me personally, she's very uh, real like uh, very realistic. And just cause she's my twin sister, she's not gonna say like, oh, you know, you're the best, you know, you're good, you know, you know, it doesn't matter if you miss 10 layups. Like, nah, she's not like that at all. Like she'll <laughs> tell me like, hey, no, you're doing, no, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And she really holds me accountable. She holds me accountable for everything. Every sprint, every miss layup, if I shoot my jump shot wrong or a jump hook or whatever, any rebound or anything, she'll go back even after the games, you know, she'll just send me messages like, you know, you did good today, but, or, or you could do this better or just things like that. And I always look to her like, Hey, what do you think about this? And how do you feel about this? And how do you think I did on this? What do you see that I don't see? And she just, honestly, she's just a great voice to have a, a great person to have in your corner. Was it strange at first? It was a little weird at first. It is a little weird at times. Cause it's like, like the coaches will be like, like if they're referring to the players, like I'll look like, oh, okay, she's talking to us. And I'm like, wait, no, she's not. <laughs> she's talking to them. And like, I'm technically over here now. So it was just like really getting used to that. But there's still like a certain, but it's so strange because there's still a certain level of bond that I have with my teammates as if I wasn't a coach that I still cherish and I believe that they cherish as well. The new role for Lanise has given both sisters a new perspective on how much work goes on behind the scenes for a Division I basketball team. It's just, I look at a lot of things that they do and I hear like, oh, they have meetings and stuff. And I also did an internship with Abby and I realized how much they do. And it's like, it's a lot. Like, I used to think like, okay, they just go to practice, they watch us, like their position group, and then they prepare for games. Like, no, they do like so much more other stuff that I don't even think about. Like, I'm like, you have to do that. Like as a player, I only was thinking like, oh, you know, coaches coach, you know, they come up with practice plans, you know, they might talk a little bit after the game. That's about it. No, <laughs> it's like a whole thing. Like there's meetings and then there's like, the practice plan is not just, oh, I just feel like doing this just because I feel like, like there's a whole thought process behind it. Um, this, I mean, the staff, seeing what the staff has to go through just to prep for one game or like traveling out of town. Like I didn't realize we carry like 10 plus bags for just out of town. Like I'm seeing all these behind the scenes and it really just makes me appreciate the staff and just the coaches even more because it's like, a lot of times it goes unnoticed by the players. So it's like, wow, like you still, you all still do such a great job, even though you 
oftentimes won't get like a thank you because nobody really realizes what goes on behind the scenes. Giving Lenise the opportunity to be an undergraduate assistant, what went into that decision? A few things. Um, I think you watch someone like Lenise really struggle physically with not being able to be who she was before. And you don't care as much about the basketball side of it as you do just the, the mental side of it. And you try to put yourself in her shoes and you think, you know, how would that feel? If something that I've been doing since I was really young, just all of a sudden doesn't feel the same, doesn't look the same, I can't do it the way that I used to. And she seemed really unhappy to me. And so at one point I just said, hey, you know, you don't have to play. And she looks at me like, yes, I do. I'm like, nah, you don't. And, and so we start having these conversations. And, and I think because she has always been a great asset to us, even when she wasn't playing, her leadership, she's very vocal. Uh, she's expressed that she wanted to be a coach. She does some really awesome things in the summer with her dad, coaches her little sister. It actually reminded me of me a little bit. And so I was like, well, just start coaching, <laughs> you, know, you know? And I think that that's pretty much how it, it started. Do you think psychologically, because they are twins, that Lynetta still gets to play? And she's been important in a few games for you this year. Is there any like uh, guilt or anything that she still gets to do it? Uh, I, I think that, that Lynetta just wants Lenise to be okay. And, and I think that that was the toughest part, was her saying, are you really okay? And Lenise saying, I'm absolutely okay. And really, Lynetta gets her own personal coach out there. If you watch during games, like they go off to the side and I don't stop them. I mean, they've been playing basketball together ever since they picked up a ball. Uh, and I actually think it's pretty neat. And, and because of the chemistry on our team, no one thinks twice about it or, or sees a problem with it. Um, so I don't think so. I think they're really, really happy for each other because they're both getting to do what they're meant to be doing right at this time. Up next, What's ahead for the Tigers as they begin a tough February slate? You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Let's take a look at the AutoZone Road Ahead. Three games on the road ahead, two at home. Some emotion maybe that'll come into play in a game here. Talk about it. Well, Houston starts off non-conference, and I don't know that that team was recognizable to anybody, you know, especially Coach Huey. And then you start watching them in conference, you're like, whew, there they go. Um, they are high octane defensively pressing all over the place, so that'll be a tough one. Uh, Wichita State much improved from a year ago, um, playing people really close and had a great non-conference. Uh, UCF, new coach, uh, who is a sorority sister and friend of mine, and then our former associate head coach Neil's on that staff so there will be a lot of emotion there for sure. What do you like about starting February well if your team's able to do that? I mean I think it's it's critical you know that, that we get off to a good start um, that we take care of the ball you know we really have minimized things um, in, in regards to our conversation and we are going to rebound the ball take care of the ball and follow the defensive game plan so if we can do those things and we should see some success. That was tonight's AutoZone Road Ahead. AutoZone, America's number one battery destination and official sponsor of Tiger Athletics. Get in the zone, AutoZone. Honestly, I think Katrina Merriweather has a connection with every college basketball team. We'll put a wrap on this one in just a minute. You're watching the Katrina Merriweather Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Thanks so much for joining us. I truly enjoyed the historical aspect of this show. I hope you did as well. We'll see you again in about a month. The game is on. The Katrina Merriweather Show is presented by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And by Simmons Bank, the official sponsor of women's athletics. This copyrighted telecast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Memphis. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the University of Memphis and Learfield.